Hi guys, it's Penny Rose Journals. How are you doing? Um, I'm here today to do a bit more on this book cover. Um, I'm still unsure of what I'm doing, so I figured it was better just to film everything I do. And if I change it, then I can cut that bit out, I guess. <laughs> I'm new to this whole doing things. Sorry if this is very noisy in my microphone, I'm not sure. But I decided to cover the cover with some tissue paper. So here we have a piece of tissue paper got in packaging for something. Hence all the tears and rips and whatever else. Um, some matte medium. I usually use um, PVA glue but my PVA glue and all my brushes are elsewhere right at the moment, so I am using this big, huge, fat brush. I hope it works out okay for me. Because it's the only one I happen to have handy here, and I didn't want to go trekking off through my house because it's quite early in the morning, and well, frankly, I'm upstairs, I'm settled doing what I want to do, and I don't want to go wandering around and disturbing everybody. I say everybody, like there's more than me here, but you know, my daughter's floating around somewhere. Who oh, am I going to disturb? Oh, I'm going to disturb my dog if I go downstairs. See, that's that's the issue we here, really, isn't it? I'm going to disturb my dog. <laughs> She's happy over there in her little bed, snoring away. I'm going to get this all over my mat. I should put something under my mat first. Whatever. Um, yeah, she's happily snoring away in her little bed in the corner, and I really just don't want to make her get up. So I'll make do with what I have. It's not weird how we're like that with our pets. It's like, oh, she's so comfy. I don't want to move and get the things I actually need because I'll disturb the dog. Yeah, rather. <laughs> Like she's ever thought for one second in her life. Oh, I better not bark at 3 a.m. I'll disturb my owner. Nah. Anyway. <laughs> That's just how I am. I think it's how a lot of us are. Once our kids grow up and sort of have lives of their own. I think our pets sort of become our children, <laughs> our current children, anyway. Nothing brings me more happiness than making my dog happy. So, <laughs> I make her happy for purely selfish reasons makes me happy. So this is clearly rocket science. Nobody can do this. This is beyond everybody's capabilities. Except for mine because I'm a genius. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Keep telling yourself that, hey? <laughs> Anybody can do this. <laughs> I literally put glue on something and put some screwed up paper on the top and now I'm putting more glue over the top of that. So, yeah, it doesn't really get any easier than that. I don't make book covers like this very often. Um, I really like them. They are fiddly and uh, I enjoy making my oops, made a hole on a hole. I enjoy making my fabric ones as well and yeah. Let's just say I don't do these very often. I don't know why. <laughs> I guess it is because of the length of time it takes because you know 
I have to do this and then I'll have to wait for it to dry and then I'll have to paint it and yeah I may or may not stick something that comes out in relief on the front um, if I do I'll just pop it on here and then cover it with a bit more tissue paper depends if I've got anything floating around that I want to use this journal doesn't really have a theme so I'm not really you know fussed on finding something that goes with the journal it's important with tissue paper as you saw I put a hole up there to be very careful it is very fragile it will rip and tear and you know, particularly where I've got a hole there it's going to be a problem for me because that is on the tape that I've put on the spine and if I leave it like that then nothing is going to stick to it so I will patch it and then I will drop my piece of my patch on a different part of my book and just cause myself all sorts of issues. That's the way we like to do it, isn't it? There you go. Consider it patched. And the idea is to try and very gently tease out any air bubbles you may have underneath it. Because air bubbles will result in dry raised patches and then they may break or tear later after you've painted them all before or hopefully before <laughs> then you've got the chance to repair them properly okay there we go that's it first stage done now I'm gonna have to go downstairs because I need to wash my brush so I'm gonna have to disturb my dog <laughs> oh well <laughs> well there we go there's another step with our book um, I might let this dry hi guys Penny Rose Journals uh, just continuing on with our journal cover like I've said before I have no idea what I'm doing with this journal um, yeah so I'm just sort of playing it by ear decided I wanted to paint the cover um, and yeah once it's all you know, blackish <laughs> I'll worry about what else is going to happen to it but fact is it cannot stay as it is so I am just going to cover it with black and then I will worry about it once it's all one color this is just acrylic paint um, I've shown you guys the brand before it's chrome acryl student grade paint um, it's a decent quality paint and um, I can get it in quite large bottles um, the ones I buy are a liter it actually comes in two liters as well basically that's for schools I guess um, because I know a lot of schools use the chroma curl. Um, I like it. It's a uh, good paint. Gives me good coverage. It's got plenty of pigment and it doesn't break the bank. I do have other paints. Oh, I have watercolors. Obviously I do do a bit of watercoloring. Um, just simple watercolors. You've probably seen these little samples that I like doing and doodling on so um, yeah I don't I'm not, I'm not a watercolorist or something I just own some watercolors <laughs> that I use for bits and pieces but um, I also have some very good acrylic paint because I used to um, paint a lot before I started junk journaling um, <laughs> I've almost totally given that up since since junk journals came into my life they've taken over everything but um, I still have quite a lot of paint so uh, I use that on my junk journals now um, yeah I also have a lot of canvases lying around that I'm unpainted on as well so uh, you never know I might pull one out and paint again one day 
I am painting on an acrylic sheet here. I don't know if it's, I hope it's not shining back in your face or anything, but um, yeah, I do have an acrylic sheet over my my desk. Um, I don't know, I've probably mentioned this before. I used to do quite a bit of assemblage art as well. Um, and I would buy a lot of large picture frames to pop that in. And um, some of them came with these heavy duty acrylic sheets as the um, you know, the faux glass if you like because they were so large so they have come in real handy um, I use them to protect my desk quite a bit you can see I was gluing on this one as well there's all sorts of things stuck to it but they're not stuck to my mat which is the main thing I love the colour that black and yellow makes. I really do. <laughs> this scungy, nasty sort of green and yeah. <laughs> You're probably looking at this going, what is she thinking? How can you possibly like that? But yeah, it's just to me that's just gorgeous. It's just a gorgeous colour. I don't know. Maybe I was an army colonel in my former life. <laughs> Got a thing for camo. <laughs> you khaki. Who knows? Probably won't even end up staying this colour. I just wanted to do it, this colour, today. Because frankly, I'm at a loss as to what to do with it, so. This was my first idea of what to do today. I think that's where um, my prior acrylic painting hobby I guess, comes in handy. I am well aware that things don't have to be perfect. <laughs> you can cover up and change and alter um, as much as you like. If you don't like it, scrub it off and start again if it's that bad, but yeah. Air, yeah, just about anything can be fixed, especially in the world of junk journaling. I mean, heavens, you just stick something over the top of it. You know, if I really hated this, if I couldn't think of a better way to you know, fix it, I could just stick fab fabric over the top, nobody would ever know it was there. So yeah, this, yeah, yeah. again, I, I harp on this all the time when I do videos, when I'm sort of, you know, busy with something and I've got plenty of time to chit chat. Um, that's the beauty of this craft, there's the no rules, there's just none. You know, as long as you put your things together properly you know, and you like them which is the most important thing as long as you like them and they don't fall apart when other people touch them <laughs> then yeah they're perfect uh, you can do whatever you like and if you don't like it change it you know, you're never stuck I think it's Pam at the Paper Outpost who always says don't ever let a lack of a craft supply stop you. Uh, don't ever let the lack of inspiration or uh, an end goal stop you either. Just do something. Once you've done something then you know, I know you get better from there and you never know it might turn out perfect the first time. Who knows? 
this. I'm likely to be perfect the first time. <laughs> but I'm happy. I'm doing something that brings me joy. And yeah, like I say, I love this. <laughs> and if I'm happy during the process, I feel that that's a good thing for a journal. Um, if I'm going to be selling it to somebody, then you know, it should be something that brought me joy mm -hmm. so that it can bring them more joy. I don't know. Some weird new age stuff going on there, I think, but yeah. <laughs> I feel like it comes through. The, the love that you have for your craft definitely comes through. And one thing I can say for sure is I love this. I love doing this. Um, I love splashing paint around and making a mess. It's just a lot of fun. So there you go. That's where she's at at the moment. We'll see how that dries. Um, I will eventually flip her over, like I say, and do the inside of the edges. And um, yeah. We'll see where we go from there. Uh, the other beauty of this acrylic mat, I mean this acrylic piece, a piece of acrylic, yeah, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Is I can just pick it up and move it off my desk now, um, and then I've got room to do other things. I don't have to worry about this lying in the middle of my desk drawing. I'll put it over there on a pile of books because you know that's what's over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks guys. Thanks for coming along and we will see you again with something else. <laughs> thanks, bye. Okay guys, here's the cover. Um, the outside's now finished and I'm moving on to just doing around the edges and inside. Um, yeah, same black acrylic. Just trying to make sure all the edges are well covered um, and all the inside um, there will be of course the um, inside front covers to go on but I obviously need to paint the edges before that happens else they'll be unattractive and raw <laughs> so basically I'm just here making them look like the outside of the book right at the moment hence I'm not painting the whole cover I don't need to so just around the edges um, yep yeah, same black, black chroma acryl um, acrylic paint and once all the black is finished I will add a bit of that yellow sort of mustard color that I have there um, just in dabs in bits and pieces and areas in various depths and yeah <laughs> just to give it that sort of bit of texture and turn it into that sort of khaki sort of color that the rest of the book is once I'm done that it has to obviously sit and dry um, once it's dry I pull it back out um, as you see here flip it over to work on the cover again and I use this foam brush to basically darken down the edges and the corners um, and run lightly over the the raised portions of the um, the cover texture just to darken the whole thing down because I didn't want it to be this sort of same colour all the way over. I want it to be a bit aged around the edges. So you'll see me going over it quite lightly and then I'll go back and do the edges a bit further and then I'll move the corners inwards again as well. So just gives it a little bit of texture that it didn't have previously. Um, of course the texture was there but yeah the black highlights it just that a bit more um, yeah just provides a bit more interest and uh, you know, also sort of provides a, a frame if you like around the um, 
the edges and the corners if you darken them down so just felt like it needed it I did use this disposable sort of sponge brush I would normally take it and wash it out and use it again and again and again and of course this day I forgot about it and left it on my desk and yeah that one will be going in the bin <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's been a couple of days <laughs> And I don't think that's going to be good for anything anymore. So, yeah, wash your brushes out when you use them, people. Don't uh, don't be like me. Wrap them up in a wet towelette and think, oh, I'll just pick that up before I go downstairs and never do. I can't even remember where I've put it right at the moment, actually. I'll have to go up and look for it <laughs> throw it away. So, yeah. <laughs> can't be trusted with my own things. See, this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> Penny Rose Journals. This is where we left off. We had painted this and then we had put some extra black over the top in the corners particularly. Um, yeah, so this is what we have right at the moment. I have finally made a decision. You will be happy to hear. <laughs> yeah, my biggest decision at the moment is which is the front and which is the back. So I believe this is the front. Just because. So I'm going to cover the spine because I like to do that anyway because there is always a possibility of this paper here cracking. Um, it is tissue paper but it is only paper and with lots of wear and tear as you can see it sort of bends and flexes and paper does not enjoy this so I'm going to cover the spine and I've also put together a few little bits and pieces so that I can put a decoration on the front um, not that I really had a direction with this journal but um, this was not the direction I expected it today <laughs> Here is my spine cover. Bloop. Yes, not exactly what we expected. Um, yeah, I decided that I wanted to do lace and fabric, so it will go, actually go like this. So it's going to start looking a bit old and tatty. Not that it wasn't looking old and tatty to start with, but yeah the whole lace thing came as a surprise to me so so i'm going to glue this to the spine and then i am going to add the decoration to the front that i have made out of similar materials um, i'll show you that when we get there but the way i like to do this is pull it up so i can see the end of it i will cut all these pieces off eventually but and then just make sure it's kind of centered as centered as I can get it so it's virtually overhanging the spine as by as much on either side when I have decided that I will pull it down to where I want it and begin the sticking process fun and games where we will <coughs> I think start from the top so as you can see it is a piece of lace curtain that's been coffee dyed layered with some cheesecloth that is also been coffee dyed layered with a piece of just calico and muslin I'm not sure we call it calico in Australia <laughs> and yes that will cover our spine nicely so I will just flip it back I will use my Helmars 450 quick dry adhesive. It's very similar to um, Fabrifix or Fabritac. Yeah, Fabritac, Fabrifix, um, those sort of glues, those silicon based glues that clean up with acetone. That is what I'm using basically. This just happens, this is actually available in um, America as well. I know they make it there. They also manufacture it in Australia, 
and I get it directly from the manufacturer in Australia. Um, you can buy it at Spotlight. Um, it's expensive, so I buy it in bulk because I use it by the ton. So, but it's great blue. It's not ever going to go anywhere. And I know that once I've stuck it down, it's staying there for the duration of time. So, it does have that unfortunate habit that Fabrifix and Fabritac and Beacon 2 in 1 and all those have. Is when it gets warm, it erupts from the top. And when it gets low in the bottle, it erupts from the top. <laughs> like a little volcano. And there's nothing you can really do about it. I try and keep it cool. Um, I mean, I, I work in a, an upstairs room. It's a loft room, so it's in the roof. So it gets hot. Um, so during the summer, you know... At some point during the day, it's going to start pouring out if I don't keep it shut. There's just no ifs and buts about it. So, yeah, I do what I can to keep it cool. And try, if I'm going to be using it, I guess I'll try and use it as much as I can in the morning. Um, yeah. And hope that if I'm going to do a big job like this, it's okay in the afternoons because I use a lot of it but if I need to dab here or a dab there I'm gonna end up drowning in it so now let's see how stuck down this piece is because it may have bled through enough it may not have seems fairly secure to be honest I will make sure to glue down the edges right so that's that. Now when I fold it, of course, all these pieces of the sides are going to lift up like so. Because I only glued it to the spine. Because of the fact that it's going to be bent, I don't want to glue it while it's flat and then try and bend it and the book's like, oh no. <laughs> so I'll just glue the spine first. And then I will glue the sides. It means when it opens, there will be a bit of bowing here. But... Um, yeah, that doesn't bother me. That's um, how it is. <laughs> Some things you just can't fight. So, with this layer on the edges, I will glue it down individually to make sure that it is properly secured. Because um, I don't necessarily want it to be glued like these little bits I don't necessarily want them to be like, glued down um, I like to have a bit of movement at the edges um, I want the majority of it glued down but I would like at the edges for it to you know be able to move around a bit just the way it is now the cheesecloth can go straight down. That doesn't need its own layer of glue that is going to stick to what's coming through that lace. There is no doubt about that. Try not to have it curled up at the edges. Not that you'll see a lot of that. You'll notice shortly. Right, I will put a little bit of glue down for this though. Again, it will still be secured and I have to be careful with this cheesecloth now because I don't want to lift it up again. It will be secured by the glue beneath it but I want it to be properly down. So there we go. That is everything on the front of the book secure. I mean I could still change my mind. It's not like I can't change my mind at this present moment. I could still make that the back and make this the front. It really doesn't matter either way. But I think this will be the back. Oop. Toss that around. Oh, I'm glad that I finally found a direction with this cover. Um, 
I really wasn't sure what I was doing with it. And that happens a lot. It's very rare I know what I'm doing. <laughs> My whole process is to just bumble along until something happens that I like. Um, yeah. I'm not very organised, I guess. I don't know. Some people seem to have a theme and an idea. I guess that's because I don't use a lot of um, pre-made stuff. I'm not really sure what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> I don't, you know, use a digi kit or a um, paper pack or something to build a book. And trust me, I've seen some, you know, there's plenty of ladies on YouTube that do and they make magical things. Things that I just couldn't do. Um, honestly, I just don't have the patience for it. I've, I've tried. I have tried. I can't say I have not tried to, you know, be matchy-matchy and use beautiful papers and, um, you know, precise cuts and you know, opening things and closing things and yeah no I can't do it I just it doesn't bring me joy <laughs> um, I'm just glad I've finished by the time I'm done so that's no fun so I don't do that so yeah there is no plan usually it uh, just grows as it is want to do so all right there we go now we have that like I say, we will get this, but how often do you lay your book like that? <coughs> yeah, <laughs> never. <laughs> Thank you, Doki. Uh, scissors. I use all sorts of scissors. Um, yeah, whatever comes to hand. These are IKEA scissors. <coughs> Just some small ones. Um, I have quite a few pairs of these just floating around my desk. Uh, I do have some nice case craft scissors that I use, you've seen them with the colourful handles, they probably currently on my desk behind me, I was doing something over there the other day. Um, that is my office desk that sits behind me but I often sit and do things while I'm researching stuff on the internet or watching videos or something. Um, yeah, I'll push my computer way back to the back of my desk and let it run and I sit and do the things that I can do in front of the computer. So I tend to leave my scissors and my pins and whatever else I'm working with over there and then have to roll back and forward to get them. But I have a chair with wheels, so you know. <laughs> it's doable. Oh, I don't mind. I just don't want to do it when I'm doing the video because it makes a racket and there's every chance that I'll knock my camera over. Um, although I will more than likely cut it out so you won't see it. That actually did happen during this video. My <laughs> camera just fell over. Uh, and you went flying across the desk. It's in goodness knows what over there. And... Uh, I had a minor panic attack, but everything is back to normal now, <laughs> and I will probably cut that out because I'm sure it won't do anybody's heart any good when they're you know, happily watching a video and they go careering off into my filthy tip of a desk. It's not filthy. It is a tip. <laughs> Anybody who uh, knew me growing up could have seen this coming a mile away, honestly. This sort of hobby or obsession, <laughs> more to the point. Um, when I was a kid, there was nothing I loved more, and it was back in those days when you could. Um, going to the tip with my dad, I used to love to go to the tip with my dad. I always come home with something because <laughs> when I went to the tip with my dad they used to just dump everything and just push it into a big pile 
So, and you could, you could just walk around in it. And you were allowed to. And just poke around in the things that other people have thrown away. And yeah, no, that was the highlight of my week if we went to the tip. I'd go scouring through things and pick things up and throw them in. I think we used to bring home more than we used to take half the time. <laughs> Much to my mother's horror and disgust. Uh, and clearly that sort of mentality has never left me because there's nothing I love more than going to the, uh, the thrift store and going through things and um, yeah bringing home things that other people don't want anymore <laughs> actually some of my best ephemera has come from a recycling center um, I know a chap that works there and he calls me if they get anything good in and yeah so it's literally coming from the tip um, <laughs> hasn't been in the tip yet he gets it before it goes in but yeah that's all stuff nobody else wants so you know that's what ephemera is anyway so there we go that is the spine done look at that lovely i may put something else on here but for now it's looking like a book and here is our signature block that we made before I'll pop that in just to show you and there we have it that's what she's looking like now the little doohy I want to put on the front I made this this morning Ta-da! yeah like I say very unexpected <laughs> all this lace and poof um, I really didn't expect it to go this way but they do what they want to do um, I don't like I say I don't have a plan just go with the flow so this is literally just a pile of um, different fabrics sewn together you can see the back this is the lining of a wedding dress that's been coffee dyed um, a piece of tulle from the same wedding dress piece of the lace curtain piece of calico edged with you know, pinking shears piece of a uh, lacy shirt that I had um, some cheesecloth another piece of calico another piece of that curtain and finally a piece of sort of white calico on the front and I just freehand uh, free motion stitched a, a bit of a heart on the front to hold it all together and make it look pretty and that's gonna go there right so not quite sure how far we got with that before I had to stop it so um, yes this is the piece that I'm going to put on here. So, I know I went through and showed you everything that it was made out of. Um, let's just stick it on, shall we? Seems like a reasonable idea. Starting to get warmer up here now. It's a little bit later in the day. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Moving into glue eruption time, so we'll see how we go here. But we need quite a bit of glue anyway, so. We'll pop it on. Again, I wanna leave the edges a bit loose. So, I'll just glue it in the middle. There is many layers of fabric here, so I'm not worried about any bleed through. So I'm just gonna stick on a ton of glue so that I know it's going to stay where I put it. And that's where I want it. Yes, I like that. I like it a lot. Okay, well, that is all I wanted to do. So, that I think is where we'll leave it for now. And um, maybe next time I come back, we will stick our signature in. Um, yeah, and then we'll go through and do some more decorating and whatnot. But um, yeah, I hope you're liking our journal so far. Uh, it's taken a turn that I didn't expect it to, but I really didn't have any idea what I was doing with it anyway. So it's not like it's you know, <laughs> disappointing to me. I like it. I think it's great. Anyway, <laughs> and I use some scraps up. Yeah. Uh, 
like it makes any difference. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for coming along with me on the journey of making this journal and I will see you again next time. Thanks, <laughs> bye.